you know, six to 12 month upside target. You could see that's a beautiful trend line through these lows right through here. One thing I want to say is, I mean, this is the beauty of it, guys. You know, everyone, when I go on interviews, they always ask me, well, what's your big play here? What's your thought process? What's your max downside? And my max downside still is 12,000 on Bitcoin with worst case scenario of 9,000. Now, 9,000 would be achieved only if you see a stock market collapse because it would be a liquidity draining panic scenario, right? So people would run away from risk assets and Bitcoin would have, probably a downside move sub 10,000. All right. But the bottom line again is that when you're looking at these charts, I'm in here trading long and short multiple times. Like we were short big, uh, we were short Ethereum already and we banked and then and Ethereum went back up and we went short right here again. And now we're in the money. All right. So same thing with Matic. I love this trade setup, right? So Matic, Right when it was down here in Bitcoin dominance, and I want to show you this, and this is really getting into some nitty gritty. But Bitcoin dominance rallied five percent. All right, if you look historically, every time it rallies five percent, there's a pullback, there's a sideways consolidation or pullback. So, in my mind, my kind of forward thinking mind for trade signals in verified investing crypto, which is my crypto service at verifiedinvesting.com, I said to myself. If Bitcoin dominance is going to pull back and you have everyone thinking the, the altcoins are dead and they were trading down here, let's buy some altcoins. And so we bought Polygon. We bought Cardano, banked like 15, 16, 18% on those trades because I was using the Bitcoin dominance chart to signal, okay, Bitcoin dominance, yes, I think it's going to go much higher down the line but it's likely going to pull back first, which gives you the option to get in the altcoins and make some money on a bounce. And look at that, exactly what I thought was going to happen. And now, by the way, Matic is coming back in here. I have a buy level on Matic in this range right down here again. Bitcoin again, guys, we're going to briefly go over this, but I just want to just point out that you have to understand the implications of this sideways consolidation. So as long as we continue to hold this lower band right here, all right. Now, I still remember a week ago, we popped above it and we closed above it. And everyone was like, oh, here we go. Gareth was wrong. It's going to break out, blah, 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 blah. And then what happens? They get the good old fashioned rug pull. Right. So that's what happens. That's the inevitability is you have to understand the confirmation signal about how key it is. You must confirm a breakout to be a breakout, just like you must confirm a breakdown to be a real breakdown. I can't tell you how many institutions sit there waiting for you to jump the gun and go long thinking something's a breakout only to pull the rug out from under you. All right, the confirmation signal, it is something that every trader must know, every investor must know, or honestly, you're just going to keep on losing money. It's just that simple. All right, so what did we see? We saw Bitcoin reversing here, and we have now retested this low. Now, the impressive, there's, there's positives and negatives here on the chart. The positive is we're still inside of this band, right? We're still inside of this realm. Um, the positive is also the last two days we've been piercing this lower band of 30,000, and they've rescued the market. They've rescued. You've had buyers come in and keep price right around that 30,000 daily close, give or take by a little bit. Today, we're up just fractionally on the Bitcoin price. All right. So again, those are some positives. The negatives. The negatives are this. Look at how long we've been going sideways. Yes, this is known in technical analysis as bullish consolidation, but really bullish consolidation should break out by now. All right. You should have had a breakout. Doesn't mean it can't, but probabilities begin to shift, right? We start to say, okay, it hasn't been able to. Think about this. There's the old analogy, and I love this analogy. This is an analogy I use about resistance or support. Think about yourself. You, you're, at, you're outside of your house. There's a fire in your house. You have your cat or your dog in there. You need to break it down, right? So you ram against that level. That's resistance. You're ramming your shoulder into it. You hit it once, it probably doesn't break down. You hit it twice, it maybe doesn't break down. By the third or the fourth point, it probably the door gives way. Okay, that's the thought process. So if we look at Bitcoin, you hit it here, you hit it here, 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 here. You even kind of got halfway in 
and it still didn't give way. And so what happens is, let's say there's that fire and there's that cat or that dog inside that you want to save. And you get to a point where you ram the door 50 times and it still doesn't break. What are you going to do? Well, you're going to figure out another way. You're going to maybe go around to a window. You're going to go around to the back door. You're going to leave this area and move away. And that's the thought process where if you can't break out after a certain amount of time, the path of least resistance is to, in this case, the downside. All right. So again, Bitcoin still within this range. But again, if we confirm below this level, you're now headed to 28,500 or so this pivot. And if you break through that, let's talk about where we're headed. This is my target. Okay, target is 26, uh, 26,900, basically around 27,000. Amazing trend line. Now, I want to be clear on this. As long as this trend line holds, this one here, this white one, then Bitcoin can be bought on pullbacks. Okay, why? Well, very simply, this is an upsloping trend line connecting all the pivot lows together. That means it is an uptrend. The trend is still up. If you break this line and you start trading down in this range, the trend is not up anymore. It has failed. And now you have to think you're probably headed back. First support would be 25,000, then potentially 20,000. And eventually, if you keep breaking these pivot lows, you're going back to that 15,700 level. All right. So again, that's your summary. Now on the upside, let's just say Bitcoin eventually breaks out, which again, I'm a long-term bull. So eventually I do think Bitcoin breaks out. My upside is very simple to calculate here. You take this pivot from 2019, you stretch it right through here. This is my ultimate kind of, you know, six to 12 month upside target. You could see that's a beautiful trend line through these lows right through here. And that's around 45,000. So again, if you're able to break above this level, this 31,000 and confirm, then you're headed to about 45,000. There is resistance around 35 that you'll have to monitor. But I still think, again, the momentum probably carries us up to about 45,000. All right. So that's your summary on Bitcoin. Quickly looking at Ethereum, guys. Ethereum, again, this is the beauty of it. Look at this little channel right in here. If this breaks, we head down to this level around $1,730, $1,740. If this area breaks, we're probably headed to this pivot high right up here at around $2,130. S&P 500, long-term trend line. We have now moved above it, which is absolutely phenomenal. It's amazing. It blows my mind. Every day I'm seeing data, economic data that shows a slowing economy, but the markets keep chugging higher. I've honestly been very surprised about this, the strength in the markets. If you look at money supply, if you look at a lot of other factors, there's a lot of factors, including economics, except for jobs. Jobs is the only thing that maybe we saw a crack on last month in the non-farm payrolls, but they've remained strong and the, the consumer continues to spend pretty well. This is your next target on the S&P right here around 45.88. That's a pivot point right there. And that'll be your second, tell well, there's a couple more pivots. If you get through that, where, where until we get to the all-time highs, you have this pivot, then you have this pivot right here, and then eventually you have the all-time highs here. Is it possible the S&P goes to the all-time highs? It's possible. 